Good evening, Internet World and Universe! This is O.R. Ash, and welcome back to The Drawing Matrix! We are back once again to continue our Ultimates Overhauled series. Last time, we powered up the Alien Force add-ons along with some Legacy Boys, so today we are going to be continuing down the road and find ourselves at the titular Ultimate Alien playlist, starting off, of course, with the highly requested Andromeda 5. Hence why I'm currently dressed as... Ash Gregor. It's spooky season and I wanted to dress up, okay? Just let me have this. Today, we will be covering Terraspin, Water Hazard, Armadrillo, Amphibian, and Energy. Oh boy, this is a tall order of an episode, so let's get cooking. Don't worry, guys. I'm fine. <laughs> Terraspin is a gentle giant Geoshalon that chooses flight over fight. Aside from being able to withdraw into his defensive shell, his only other notable ability is spinning his limbs around like big fan blades to generate wind currents. Do his legs meld together? Now, this can be pretty useful in combat for keeping enemies at a distance, but imagining him going through the UES and faced with pure combat all the time, he definitely needs a bit more of an offensive ability. Now, I don't want to give him something that makes things too easy or is like way overkill like missiles or explosions. <laughs> So instead, I am going to be increasing his offense while doubling down on his defense. For my take on his ultimate, I'm going to be adding to his shell specifically. He now has this large two-layered extension to his shell that can separate from his main body and hover off the ground thanks to his airflow control. These extensions keep enemies further a distance from his main body while also providing some bumper car style ring toss action, being able to fling these rings out independently to bump attack enemies. Also, for a fun bit of a changeup, he can now pull air in through the vents on the top of his shell, making it to where he can spin his shell rings in the opposite direction of himself, making for one gigantic big spinning attack. Essentially, he's just a big old Beyblade now. I also gave him some defensive horn spikes. So, to recap, as far as his new abilities, he now has layered shell extensions that can independently propel via air currents, and now has some defensive horn spikes. As far as his trade-offs, because of his new oblong shell setup, he is now stuck quadrupedal when standing. Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate Terra spin that I dub Roundabout. <laughs> Ultimate Terra Spin. First, some nice cold water. Next up, we have the Barnacle Boy with the literal drip, Water Hazard. Decked out in impenetrable armor and equipped with hydrokinesis, this shellhead is pretty balanced fighter already. But since I have to make ultimates for him anyway, let's test the waters a little bit with his abilities. For my ultimate water hazard, I wanted to make him much more crabby. I'm going to be covering his limbs in thick fur and basing him off of a yeti crab. I'm not giving him claws though. That's, that's too crabby. This water hazard can now soak his fur in water and then either boil it, creating steam and scalding physical attacks, or freezing it, creating solid spiky ice armor for jabbing and bashing attacks. He can still shoot blasts of the various temperatured water, I just thought adding it as more of a detail for the armor itself would have been really interesting. Plus, the barnacles that he had on his shoulders in Omniverse have now become shoulder-mounted barnacle cannons that can blast water as well. These shoulder cannons, along with his crabby dreads, more helmet-styled head, and additional patterning are meant to be a little visual nod to the Yotcha from Predator. To recap, as far as his new abilities, he now has thick fur that he can either freeze or boil for various attacks and armor, his shoulder barnacles can now blast water as well, he can now also separate his body into three independent acting crab structures. You know, like for evading, I guess. I don't know, I, his nipple eyes now have purpose. As far as his trade-offs, he simply loses his retractable visor. Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate water hazard that I dub Blaster Cast. Ultimate Water Hazard. Need a hand, Captain? Next up, we have the one man wrecking crew, 
Armadrillo. Now, we all know I'm not a big fan of mechanical aliens, but despite looking like he's a part of the DeWalt family of power tools, I just love Armadrillo for some reason. Like, I don't know why. He is one of, if not the most mechanical looking alien. It's just a big robot guy. Seeing as you can't see any organic bits on him at all, for my ultimate, I decided to lean fully into the mechanical angle. This dude gonna be putting the power in power tools. His elbow pistons are now outfitted with the same array of tool options as his hands, giving him front to back dual digging and shaking. But to shake things up a bit more, he can also rotate his arms a full 360 degrees for maximum tunnel coverage. And he can now split and fold his arms at the engine block, making for some double decker drill punching. So now we're gonna be going full mech tech because he can also convert his body into one massive drill. To help having to deal with his predator slamworm, I wanted to make him able to traverse quicker underground and his tail acting as the head of a massive drill body to quickly dig seemed like a pretty fun workaround. This ability is inspired directly by Simone's first mech from Gurren Lagann. Also, I took some visual inspiration from like the face chest design. The face chest thing actually spawned a whole separate ultimate armadrillo concept that I ended up cutting for time, so join our Patreon if you want to see that, I guess. As a final add-on ability that I'd like to give Armadrillo, I'd like to give Armadrillo something I feel like he should have had in the first place, and that's echolocation. This man is bringing those good vibrations. I feel like he should have already been able to do this, but I'm adding this with his ultimate specifically because with the new overall armor size increase that I gave him, he has a very... Uh, limited field of view. Is it that your body is too massive for your teeny tiny head, or is it that your head is too teeny tiny for your big fat body? So, to recap, as far as his new abilities, his arms are now full 360 spinning double-sided tools that can fold up for doubling down, and his body can convert into a massive drill. He also now has echolocation. As far as his trade-offs, he now has an extremely limited field of vision. Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate armadrillo that I dub Excavator, spelled XKV number eight R. Ultimate Armadrillo. Now, I hope you're enjoying this episode of The Drawing Matrix. If you'd like more episodes like this, including our Ultimates Overhauled series, please check out our newly released web series, Five Years Later. The first three episodes are up on the main channel now, and all of our projects go hand in hand, meaning supporting 5YL supports future episodes of The Drawing Matrix as well. So go check it out, and let us know what you think. Now, back to the show. Can't stop a vision plan of business. Up next, we have the squishiest of Ben's electric aliens, Amphibian. Now, Amphibian has always felt a bit of an odd one out of the bunch for me. All of the rest of the Andromeda boys have some kind of armor element to them, either naturally or, you know, prison. But I will say, it does feel like his main body is still supposed to look like a suit of some kind, maybe something akin to like a poncho. For my ultimate amphibian, I drew inspiration from a few very different sources. Number one, Eric Conte's Big Chill concept art. I like the look of this cloak, so I took inspiration from it. Number two, one of my core music memories in life comes from the Voltaire song Brains from Billy and Mandy, in which a big old gelatinous meteor monster pulls out people people's brains and eats them. Brains, brains, I'm all right. I need a brain till she's all but five. I came up with a new ability that I call bubble braining. Essentially, Ultimate Amphibian's body produces an electrically charged gel that can shock and paralyze upon contact. He can also use this gel to pull people's minds out of their bodies and stow it away in a gel bubble that he creates. Think like Albedo's plot with Azmuth's brain in Omniverse. It's the same concept, but no tech needed. I took visual inspirations from the nervous system, the brainstem, and the Manowar jellyfish. Ironically, being brainless, Manowars are made up of mindless zoids that feed it and help it reproduce, which this inspires the Ultimate's other ability, muscular puppeting. Once the brain has been bubbled, the leftover body can be controlled via phased-in tendril, electrifying synapses in the brain. So, to recap, he can produce electrically charged paralytic gel, with this gel he can pull people's minds out of their bodies, and he can puppet around said bodies. As far as his trade-offs, very simply, I'm taking away his projectile attacks. If he wants his new abilities to work, he has to be either physically touching his enemy or partially phased through them. Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate amphibian that I dub Voltaire. Ultimate Amphibian. 
You hungry? How about the taste of this? Last up on the plate today, we have the radioactive man in a tin can, NRG! Now, NRG was a tough egg to crack, mainly because his shell is made out of metal. For my ultimate NRG, I imagine that he gets stuck in his suit for his duration of time in the UES. Because of this, he can't use his abilities like flight, intangibility, or his max power output. He ends up having to adapt to his slow, clunky containment suit. Now, seeing as how much of a literal hothead Pandor was, this ultimate probably didn't want to accept that and would spend his time trying to somehow burn his way out of his suit. Over time, having NRG burning hotter and hotter trying to get out, even with a decent half-life decay of his radiation, the atomic structure of the metal would wear out long before he would. It being broken down and superheated for a super long time, I I imagine his suit would steadily melt and conform to his body, melding into his flesh. With this new metallic layer to his body, he can superheat his skin, stretching and bending it into a variety of shapes. Because his suit conformed to his sleeker shape, he can move around more quickly while still having the metallic defense and locking in his radiation, sacrificing his flight and intangibility to gain better radiation control and defense, while also getting the bonus weapon shifting to boot. Also, just a fun little detail I wanted to bring attention to, I turned the three vents of his suit into a pattern resembling T of a skull. From this port, he can still fire his limited rad blasts. Anyway, to recap, as far as his new abilities, he now has a more sleek moving body with metallic defenses and rad cap intact, and he can shift around his skin and limbs to make superheated weapons. As far as his trade-offs, he loses his flight and intangibility for a much more solid defensive form. Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate energy that I dub Nucleaver. Ultimate energy! And that is it! The Andromeda Boys finally have ultimate forms. But what I'd like to know is what peeps think of these boys. Especially since I didn't take a single leg this episode. And, and I'm, I'm hungry! hungry. If you want to help support us, consider joining our Patreon. It's just $1 a month, and you can get a bunch of exclusive sneak peeks and behind-the-scenes content on all of our project productions. Also, check out our other links down below, like our Twitch, where you can hang with us while we work, and my socials, where I'll be posting the Albedo edits of these boys sometime later today. As always, I am O.R. Ash, and I'm surviving... Will you... Peace.